with a man. Is there a man around here? I need to find a person. Truly live individual. Somebody truly alive, a real person. Is there somebody around here? I don't know. There's actually a person maybe around. He I'm is. a man. I'm a man. Is that a truly live person? Yes, yes. I I'm need a, a real person. Hey, hey, hey. Is there hey, a live hey, person hey, around hey, here? Hey. My name is Casper Johansson and I'm your YouTube philosopher. This video is about the infamous Diogenes and his philosophy and the impact of his uh, peculiar worldview. Diogenes set the ultimate example of what a philosophy can teach us and what a genuine philosopher ought to be like. A human being devoted to the practice of what the Greek called Pahisia, which means commitment to speak the truth, to say it all under all circumstances. The philosopher Plato called Diogenes a mad Socrates. Now Socrates was Plato's teacher, so Plato was actually referring to Diogenes as a teacher, someone wise but in a mad, twisted version of a great philosopher. Supposedly, Diogenes and Plato crossed paths, and Diogenes made a mocking of Plato. Diogenes should have stated that Plato's lectures on philosophy is a waste of time. And at one of Plato's lectures, when Plato defied, defined man as a featherless biped, Diogenes plucked a chicken and showed it to the audience and said, here is Plato's man. Diogenes showed contempt for all such kind of learnings that uh, Plato's learnings was about. Diogenes disliked the systematic thought, putting things into a system of knowledge. In a sense, Diogenes is not a traditional philosopher since he regarded it as a waste of time to ponder about life and be immersed in big uh, abstract thoughts. The Greeks sought peace of mind and happiness, what they called eudaimonia and ataraxia. Well, Diogenes find it in a specific way of living. Most philosophers of history agrees that Diogenes didn't write anything down and the texts attributed to him are not by Diogenes himself. It is said that Diogenes got the idea for living in a barrel because he saw a snail and it seemed practical to have a house that you can go around with and sit down where, where you choose to. Diogenes is a, an adherent to the Cynic philosophy. And the word Cynic means dog or like a dog. And Diogenes actually lived like a dog on the streets. But think of these street dogs of that time in ancient Greece. They lived in accordance with nature. They lived in accordance with simplicity and they have the ability to adapt themselves to change in circumstances. They are indifferent to a concern of where and how they live and what they eat. They actually have absolute freedom of speech for they can bark at anyone or whomever they dislike. The street dogs are in fact more free than us today. They have no obligations and does not belong to anybody or anything. That's what these cynics admire about uh, those street dogs. Now Diogenes chose to go to the extreme and live like a dog because he wanted to achieve uh, freedom and achieve this uh, happiness and uh, peace of mind. And he got it by living the simple life of a dog. 
And he really lived like a dog. There are stories of him barking at people or masturbating in public. From this position of a dog, Diogenes could mark his surrounding society and his uh, views and philosophy comes to us through stories and uh, legends of his life. A story goes that when people panicking in the city because of a rumor of an attack, people were running around trying to hide their material wealth. Diogenes rolled his, his uh, barrel around trying to look uh, as busy as the panicking people. But it was a way of mocking the people because they, they cling to their material goods while Diogenes is uh, free from such things. One of the greatest legends of his life is when he meets Alexander the Great. You know, the Macedonian king who conquered most of uh, the known world at that time. I made a silent movie that illustrates this meeting, so let's watch it. The silent movie hopefully gives you an idea that Alexander the Great had uh, nothing to offer Diogenes because Diogenes is free and Alexander is actually the one who is uh, in suffering and Alexander is not the one who is free because he's a slave to his lust for, for worldly possessions and his uh, desire for, for greatness. Diogenes has all his uh, needs in a barrel and in his own body. A legend says that Diogenes learned how to live by seeing a boy drinking water out of his hands, uh, saying that uh, he, Diogenes, was not aware until then that nature had already provided him with a cup. Diogenes said that he was a citizen of the world a cosmopolitan, the first cosmopolitan. Think about it. Man makes artificial borders by means of war and politics, not borders by nature. Diogenes belongs to no nation or tribe. He's free from such restraints. Another legend tells us that Diogenes once saw a authoritative figure beating a thief 
And Diogenes shouted, Wanders of wanders, a thief who steals in public, disciplining a thief who steals in secret. I'm telling you these legends not in a systematic way, because Diogenes' philosophy will not abide by a system of, uh, of thought. Let's see another silent movie that illustrates a story from Diogenes' life. This one is about when he was approached by someone who wanted to be his uh, pupil. Let's see. You can say that there is two interpretations to this story. One is that Diogenes he makes a mockery out of the aspiring pupil because he knows he doesn't have what it takes to become a true cynic. Diogenes is right about that in the end because the pupil gives up uh, the project of uh, becoming his pupil. The second interpretation is that Diogenes gave him the fish as a test, but the pupil fails the test and gives up because he cares about uh, that he smells of rotten fish and can live with the fact that you have to get rid of such considerations when aspiring to become a true uh, cynic. Okay, what did other philosophers think of Diogenes? The great German philosopher Arthur Schopenhauer wrote The life of one dog may be worth more than the lives of many human beings. This is a reference to Diogenes, who Schopenhauer held in high regards uh, compared to others. Another philosopher who lived at the same time as Schopenhauer is uh, Hegel. And Hegel disliked the cynics and he wrote about them. Generally speaking, the cynics are nothing more than Swedish beggars who found their satisfaction in the insulin that they showed others. They are worthy of no further considerations in philosophy 
and they deserve fully the name of dogs, which was an early name given to them, for the dog is a shameless uh, animal. I generally like Hegel's philosophy, but I would disagree with him on this. Some might even say that uh, the f uh, that Diogenes is actually a model, a living embodiment of uh, Nietzsche's Friedrich Nietzsche's Übermensch, the Nietzschean Superman, in many respects. It has been suggested by some historians that Jesus knew of Greek philosophy and was inspired by Cynic philosophy, which was also a big cult at Jesus' uh, time. Jesus, like Diogenes, lived the life of a beggar. Now throughout history, some have either treated Diogenes as a true hero of philosophy and said he is one of the great philosophers of history, or some have condemned him as a deranged, worthless man and a psychopath, or called him a pseudo-philosopher. But I would like to say that one's reaction to Diogenes, as happens in many situations, depends on uh, one's own frame of mind. I, for one, regard Diogenes as a great philosopher, although I sometimes uh, speculate if he even existed, or if he's just uh, some great legend that teaches us stuff, but he, he wasn't a real person. We cannot go back in time to check up on the stories that was told about uh, Diogenes if they were actually true. We cannot do that. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to watch more silent films that I made about philosophers and philosophies, click on one of these videos. If you like to subscribe to my channel, click the subscribe channel.